You're listening to 89.9 FM, WKCR in New York. I'm Chaim Lazarus. It's Arts and Answers. The film is Free the Nipple, and I'm joined by Lena Esco, director and star. Hello, Lena. Hi. And by Casey LeBeau, who is an actress and associate producer on the film. Casey, both of you, thanks for coming. Of course. Um, so, Lena, first question for you. Um, Free the Nipple, what's it about? Give us a little synopsis. Um, Free the Nipple is a feature film and a real life movement. And uh, it's about these group of girls challenging the censorship laws in New York City to start a national conversation about equality by going topless. Okay. And um, how did this campaign begin or film begin? What was kind of the, uh, how did this all get started? What was the first idea? It started around like four years ago um, as an idea. And then I started talking to it to another director who I happened to be in a movie back in 2010 called LOL. And I told her about the film and I had an idea about these girls running around topless, you know, for equality kind of thing. And she's like, whenever you're done with a script, I want to finance your film. And I thought she was kidding. And in 2012, she basically found a million dollars to shoot the film. Wow. And here we are. And um, LOL is with Miley Cyrus. Correct. And um, I guess she's on board with the campaign? Yeah, she's been uh, one of the first supporters, kind of helped kick, like, launch our campaign back in December of last year. And Casey, how did you get on board this film? What's what's your involvement? How did you first hear about what, all this stuff? Uh, well, I've known Lena for a very, very long time, and I knew uh, about Free the Nipple in its many different incarnations and the way that it sort of grew from the I- the initial you know idea into what it is now. Um, but I, I basically I think that there was just a point in which they could not cast a certain character and. Lena sort of just had this aha moment and decided to wrangle me into the situation, so to speak. And uh, and then through the filming, I ended up becoming um, a producer on it. Got it. Um, little background here. What are the current laws in America? I know it varies by state uh, regarding toplessness, nudity, etc. I mean, it's it's illegal for women to be topless in 35 states. Five of those states, it's illegal for women to breastfeed in public. It's You can get up to three years in prison in Louisiana and $2,500 in fine. Um, so there are still a lot of laws against women's bodies and what they should be doing with them. And what about men? Are there any laws regarding men being topless? No, no laws at all. And I always bring back to a little bit of history of men's toplessness in back the in the 20s, early right? yeah in the early 1900s tens of thousands of men were getting arrested for going topless and it wasn't until 1936 that four guys from Coney Island fought the law and they passed obviously by a male judge and uh, now men have the right to go topless or you guys would be wearing probably a one piece suit nowadays <laughs> <laughs> it was a good style it was a good style that's all i'm saying um, you know uh, i mentioned to Casey off mic earlier that um, I kind of, I I always like to go into a movie knowing as little as possible, um, and then I'll do the reading later. So actually, when I first put the movie on, um, for some reason I had made the assumption that it's a documentary, and then I turned it on to see that it was a narrative feature. Why cover this topic uh, in a narrative feature? Why not a documentary about such a topical issue? Because, well, number one, I... I'm acting movies and TV and stuff like that, and I wanted it. The day I was going to direct a movie, I wanted it to be a feature narrative film. I don't, I didn't, never thought of myself as directing a documentary, so that was the main reason. And the second reason is because I wanted to, I want to kind of. It was based on real people, a lot of them, and I just wanted to show that side to it because documentaries, a lot of the time, they get lost. And, and as a first-time director, I, you know, I was running that as well. So that's what I knew, and I did it. Um, did you want to add anything about that, Casey? Because I know we were talking I a think, bit about I, it I, off well, mic. Just, just to speak on the sort of misinformation out there, a lot of people f- think that Free the Nipple is a documentary because of the subject matter. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it, you know, it's, it's sort of with the movement starting and sort of just catching fire, we 
we didn't really have a lot of control over, tell, you know, directing people, so to speak. But um, I, I think that I'm, I kind of think there's something really funny about the fact that everybody's going to go in thinking it's one thing and then be taken on this ride. And you at know? the same time, there is, if I remember correctly, a couple of clips which are like archival clips, newsreel type clips, which do so show some real events. So there is a slight element of documentary within this narrative. Yeah, it does. And it's sort of, there are elements of it blurring, you know, the lines of fiction and reality. And and I, I, I think that it would have been very difficult to tell the story that we're telling and, you know, in a, in a documentary style. It's sort of this very, very interesting experience of these girls, like, trying to get through this, trying to make this happen and, um, you know, hitting a lot of hurdles along the way. So kind of like a chicken and egg question. Like, <laughs> did, did like, is you know, this is based on real characters. Who are these characters that it's based on? What was the, like, an activism campaign or a movie? Like, what... Going back to that, you know, what kind of came first is oh, in the, terms well, of the, the one of the campaign. first people that kind of inspired everything is my best friend, one of my best friends, um, Sarah Beth Stroller, who uh, he, she's the freest person I know. And I grew up the opposite. You know, I grew up Catholic. I'm not religious anymore. But I w- grew up repressed and very ashamed, like shy of my body. And she was the opposite. And I was, you know, it's, always it's fascinating. Yeah, it's just fascinating. I'm like, why is she so free? Why am I not like that? So I started filming her, and a little funny story about her, when she was five months old, she got kicked out of the church because her mom was breastfeeding her. So there's something in her subconscious that she just rebels against anyone trying to put laws in her body. So um, that kind of started everything. And those videos, I ended up showing them to Lisa as well as the director of LOL, who started laughing. And she's like, this is amazing, so brilliant. Like, I really want to do this. And that helped. A lot of the little videos are shot of Sarah Beth. And that was one of them. And another character is Phoenix Feely. You know, she was... Uh, I read a lot about her before doing the film. She got, she was in a New Jersey beach topless, even though it's legal to be topless. She got arrested and she was in jail for nine days on a nine day hunger strike. So that was one of the main characters. So we thought that the movement was was going to start after the film came out. Mm -hmm. But it's been kind of a struggle putting the movie out because of the, the subject matter and because of the title. So there's been a lot of censorship from all angles. So the last year we spent just spent editing with three different editors because I couldn't find the right cut. And then towards the end of the year, is when we started sending the movie out, people were connecting with it, but they just didn't know what to do with it, like distribution companies. So that's when I decided I was like, I have to start a campaign. I'm going to show how to, I'm just going to market the film myself. And that's what I did. In December, we started campaigning for Miley, starting tweeting and also writing Huffington uh, Post blogs and educating people on the process that we've been going through from day one. So the last year has been nothing but campaigning, and it got us here. And one of the big things that we were facing was an NC-17 rating, um, just because of, there's no, as you saw, there's no obscene sexual, n- you know, behavior. I don't there's, think there's anything sexual in the whole film. No, there's not. I don't not, think there's a kiss, is there? I mean. <laughs> I don't know if we'll, there's anything we'll let, sexual. We'll have viewers. Yeah, I don't <laughs> but, remember. <laughs> but it, it, there's no, it's, you know, there's no love story. There's no gratuitous sexual whatever there's no violence it's 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 a very you know sweet story and just because of exposed areola just that we were going to get an nc-17 rating and that was like a big thing because distribution companies don't want to touch that because where theaters don't want to show it right especially with unknown actors yeah you know right so just a, a background for the, for the listeners i mean if there's an nc-17 you have tons of difficulty with distribution you're not going to show it in the amc it's going to be in a couple little art houses maybe and netflix probably won't have it like a bunch of distribution and nc-17 is considered pornography right so what's the current situation regarding the rating we're not rated not uh, not rated nope. this film is not yet rated, this film's not yet rated. <laughs> that's a great documentary yeah <laughs> wow yeah um that was ifc's idea i was like you know i don't if you guys want to submit it i'm totally cool they're like no the, I, the IFC is the distribution company. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just the again, the reference, every one of my listeners, in addition to checking out Free the Nipple, should also check out the film. This film is not yet rated. Yeah. About the MPAA and their very dark, secretive rating process. Um, so as we're hearing an example of right now, um, 
This film is not sexual. It has breasts. And that is and, it. And not even, like, a crazy amount in terms of other films I've seen. Yeah. And, uh, and in they no got sexual the context Yeah, not even sexual context. Like, in, just breasts in the street. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So I know they have uh, on that secret board, like, a priest and a lawyer and a school oh, teacher. Yeah. So yeah. whatever those secret they disguised people... Decided. One. There's more gun <laughs> violence in PG-13 films and rated R films. Hmm. So who's who's doing what in there? Hmm. It, it, it was a huge. It was such an interesting thing for, to really get into because if you you know I've been in films that have huge amounts of violence in them, and they're rated PG-13. And to just think that our movie that's like just quite sweet really at the end of the day would be considered pornography or or even go in the in the neighborhood of being an R or anything like that NC17 it was just really really you know you lift the curtain on what are we, what are we doing around here and hence the what is more obscene a nipple or or a gun or violence yeah um what are the uh what are the FCC's rules regarding nipples on television and stuff then, like that. Um, oh, in network television, you, you cannot have any nipples. And I think Family Guy did a whole thing on the FCC. You cannot have any nipples. So it Ever? Would be, no, at all. So, like, I, I can tell you, you know, we're a radio station here. After 10 p.m., so it's considered dark hours. If we swear in artistic setting, if it's, like, in a song, we can get away with it. I can't just swear on the radio. Otherwise, we'll be hit with major fines. Is there, like... There's just no nipples, period, on None TV ever. At all. Don't, do you remember Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl? Sure. I mean, that's well, that was primetime, though. Yes. Well, that was, that was that's still the FCC. Mm-hmm. That's the FCC. Plus, you know, she would, that that was it was not even nipples and nipple shield, and she, it right. was out for only half less than half a second. Yeah. And she, you know, 500,000 <laughs> Americans were so bored, they had to call the FCC and the PTC and complain about something like a shield. I mean, that's ridiculous. Five hundred thousand dollars. She was fined for that, and yet we see all kinds of murders and, you know, gun violence. Gun violence on TV. Um, Lena, why, why is this topic so important for you? What is it about this topic that you're gonna spend your time, spend, make this? It's not an easy th- thing to make an entire film, finish it, get distribution. Why is this topic so important that you? really just went all in for your directorial debut? <laughs> uh, well, first, uh, I think I've always been kind of an activist. And I've always... A rebel. I've always been a rebel. <laughs> and when this came up and just started thinking about girls being topless and the whole money behind the sexualization of, of boobs in America, I knew that I was going to hit a chord. I didn't know what kind of chord. And I've gotten a little glimpse of it in the last year. But, uh, yeah, I like to push buttons and I like to uh, challenge people and I the main purpose of this film was to really start a dialogue so that 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 was one of the main things but also I think growing up I've always questioned the whole the way women are treated and the oppression of women around the globe and it wasn't until like while we were doing the script that I started researching more and more about women like Susan B. Anthony fighting for women's rights from you know late 1800s and because of her women were allowed to vote in August of 1920. And then, you know, also knowing that it wasn't until 1968 that there was, that was the first law that was about protecting women from men beating them up and stuff like that, or women still getting paid 78 cents for every dollar a man makes today in 2014. So I kind of wanted to just start a conversation because I can't believe that we're almost in 2015 and there's still no equality in all kinds of matters. So uh, it's stuff that bugs me, and and I just felt like I had to do it. But I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that I was going to be so immersed. I thought this was going to be over like a year ago, <laughs> but I'm still here. So I, yeah. But why female toplessness? You know, you mention equality. You mention uh, the pay gap amongst why. genders. Because no, um, I'll tell you why. This is because if no one was going topless in this film, and the title was not free the nipple. No one would be talking about equality. Nobody. Sometimes you have to do certain things to start a dialogue. Shocking. Yeah, you have to, and and that's the thing. Because we made a film and a movement called Free the Nipple doesn't mean we want the whole world to go on a topless revolution. 
it's really about starting a dialogue. The nipple has become the Trojan horse to allow a real dialogue to, to, to come into place about equality. So mm-hmm. because it is, a, I guess, a subject people are interested in, for lack of a better term, um, so it's kind of a, as you said, a Trojan horse, a proxy for greater equality. Mm-hmm. So otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. yeah. And I believe that Free the Nipple has had such a big impact in a way where ever since that there's been a talk about Free the Nipple and all of this, it, when it came out, it sparked up all kinds of dialogues on feminism and on equality, like from Huffington Post to Time Magazine, all, all kinds of things. And I think Free the Nipple is a big influence in that. Absolutely. Because of the Free the Nipple campaign, uh, women are now allowed to post pictures on Facebook. You know, Facebook uh, breastfeeding. actually... Are, Let's be clear. Breast breastfeeding. Of breastfeeding. So. Tell me more about the campaign in terms of specifics. What's the, the purpose, the mission? Who are some of the celebrities who've gotten behind it? Um, the purpose of the campaign originally was to spread the word and educate people on what we were trying to do because a lot of people, well, actually, the majority of people would misunderstand what we were trying to, to say because of the title in itself. The title is meant to be funny and engaging, you know. We all did this with a lot of passion and devotion and, and, and we, something we believe in. We're not here to push our truth onto anybody. This is about, you know, starting a dialogue. And it's not about saying you're right and I'm wrong. This is about what we believe in. And if you want to join us, great. Uh, the people that have kind of come on board and supported publicly are, you know, from Scott Willis to Rihanna to Lena Dunham to Liv Tyler, Russell Simmons, Miley Cyrus, uh, Cara Delevingne. Um, Suki Waterhouse, Suki Waterhouse, uh, Dree Hemingway, Chelsea Handler. So they've, they've, I think they've been felt some sort of censorship in their, in their lives in terms of like social media or Instagram, and they've felt like they had to speak about it publicly. Um, but I think we're still far from where we need to be, which is really change some laws. Um. Let's talk about breasts, obviously. Um, <laughs> do you, do you, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, and, there, and there's a line in the film, you know, our, our sexuality, I'm paraphrasing, our sexuality is being taken away and sold back to Essentially us. Essentially sold back to us. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, another line in the film where, you know, it talks about the nipple is the first thing a baby sees. It's where it's getting that life force, its first nutrients. Um, I'm just wondering if you could talk a little about breasts as sexual objects or as non-sexual objects. I guess, what's your personal opinion? How do you see them? How does, like, America see them in terms of, you know, its FCC guidelines and stuff like that? And is it different in different parts of the world? Yeah, I just want to – I don't know the exact statistic, but I think there's something like, you know, 187 cultures, different cultures specifically on the planet, and only – 10% 10% of them view the breast as a sexual organ. It's it's widely on this earth not thought of as, well, basically the way that America sees it. You know, even in Europe, people are sunbathing topless in front of their children and nobody's, you know, rushing over to hide the seven-year-old's eyes. And it's, it's really a very much an American, puritanical, rooted thing to still have this, like, Oh my God, no, boob, no, don't show that. But, you know, if you walk through Times Square and you look up around, there's boobs everywhere, just not a nipple. There's Victoria's Secret boobs, you know, pushed up underneath the, those girls' chins. And it's just it's just this weird thing where we, and that's the whole point of the, the line in the film about the sexuality being sold back to us, is... I want to look like that with those big boobs, you know, hidden in that beautiful, like, expensive bra, but don't let anybody see my nipples. God forbid. You can, yeah, you can (laughs) sexualize them. You can objectify them. Like, the advertisers can do whatever they want with women's breasts. But the moment somebody makes a statement, part of a free the nipple group or whatever, and, and shows her boobs in a protest or just as a political statement, you're slut shamed or you're doing something evil you know this seven-year-old girl once told me why is it that we can wear them why is it that we can sell them but we can't wear them and that's the whole point why can they sell them but we can't wear them so 
there's money behind sexualizing the boobs in America. America is obsessed with boobs, and that's okay. <laughs> that's totally okay. Curious. Have I have a question here. This is from a, an audience member. Um, do any of the actresses in the film have uh, breast implants? First off, no. none of the I... actresses did. There was, you know, when we did the the topless stunts, where you know when we got the armies of the women to come in. I think there may have been a couple of breast cancer survivors mm -hmm. that had had mastectomies and reconstructive surgery, but uh, none of the actresses have. Uh, well, the funny story is that the, that Michelle Miss Bracey. Knockout. <laughs> yeah, Michelle Bracey. Miss <laughs> it. She uh, when she came to uh, shoot as one of like the end art or art topless installations. She, I asked her why she was doing it, and she said, because I just got breast cancer, and I don't know how long I'm going to have them for. And uh, she ended up kicking cancer in the butt, and she came back for reshoots <laughs> with one boob, and that was pretty amazing. But just one boob. But to answer that question, I, I, I don't think there's anybody that I know that was in had film implants. That had implants, no. So, like, was that a conscious decision? And no. Like, no. No. <laughs> It just happened to be it that just way. Happen. If there was girls with implants, that's I'll welcome that too. Who cares? All boobs are beautiful, no matter what shape or size. On that same vein, as actresses, um, I'm just kind of wondering what the conversation is like in terms of when an actress decides to bare her breasts in a movie. I I know that it's like you know, you know, the internet gets all crazy. So like, what what's the decision making process? you know, when you're thinking, oh, I'm going to show my breasts on screen as actresses? Well, I think it's it's individual. Every situation is, is different. Um, and every individual has a different reaction to it. I know there were some people who did not feel comfortable doing it. There were some people who didn't feel comfortable at first and then felt real comfortable all of a sudden later, you know. Um, but, you know, whenever anybody decides to to do something like that, there's there's obviously a discussion that goes on between the director and the actor um, I had, for the most yeah, part. That was always the main issue. A lot of actresses wanted to do the film or play Liv's character, and they all had concerns about it. Like, it's going to ruin my career. And I was like, what career? You know, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry. If anything, that will give you a little boost. Yeah. I mean, so uh, my at the time, I was with another agency, and they were not supportive of it. They're like, you're just going to do a movie about toplessness? And I was like, yeah. And they dropped me in 2012, right before shooting this film. Uh, so that there was no support from the representation. <laughs> Got it. Um, is, is it a, I know we touched on this a bit before, is it at all a goal, like would you like to see more women topless on a hot summer's day at the beach? Is that at all a goal of the film? At least or a choice. It, at least a choice. To do whatever yeah, you want choice. with your body. That's, and that's it. That's it, just having the choice. It, it's like Rosa Parks said it, and I always bring this up because she said something really important. I, I want to sit in the front of the bus with everyone else. Why do they have those rights? And I don't. It's the same thing. Why do men have these rights? And I don't. That's it. Um, or, or, or even why do women in other countries have these rights and we don't, you know? Well, they have other countries where there is no, no I mean, rights, but whatever. I, I get you know what, what I'm getting, right? Yeah, getting at. totally, totally. Um, I want to, while we still have time, go into something a little controversial. I mean, I guess it's all controversial. But... Um, Michelle Rodriguez tweeted, and this is just a part of the quote, that it may create create a rape case influx. Um, I know there's been this uh, video that was recently on YouTube, 10 Hours of Walking in the Streets of New York as a Woman, cat where calling. there's a huge problem with catcalling. So um, this was actually prompted by a female listener who said, you know, I have enough problems just walking down the street with my shirt on, um, you know, with, with my shirt off, like, it's, it's going to be horrible. Um, I was just wondering, like, what your thoughts would be about how, you know, how women are treated um, now and, you know, with that, with that choice. If a woman was walking down the street topless, how do you think, uh, how do you think that would go for her? I mean... Obviously, there's, 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 you can't control the way people are going to react to things, but we are not advocating that women walk around without their shirts on. We are, we're talking about something much bigger, 
that's that's like you know taking all of the important aspects of this conversation and like removing them to just say oh it's just about walking down the street without your shirt on that's not what it's about it's about equality it's about you know our culture's opinions and and reactions to women's bodies and sexuality and and all of these things and if you you know want to speak on the uh, tweet from Michelle um yeah I mean it's just because you know if a girl is really really wearing barely any clothes high heels and a mini skirt and like push her bras isn't she calling for that as well I'm not saying anyone's calling I'm for saying, anything but that's what I'm saying like it's like a girl being topless is not has nothing to do with calling for rape at all it has no connection and um, and I'm glad Michelle brought that argument up because it's a question that sometimes comes up and again like Casey said this is not about going topless this is something we had to do in our movement in our film to spark a real dialogue um, but again women are not being treated as equal if a guy is topless is he calling to get raped or are women screaming at him in the street, you know? Should we all jump the guys that are walking around without their shirts on and rape them? You know, it's like, it's just it's just so such a weird thing to say because, and that brings us all back to there is no equality. But you know what, I do have, I, have, I believe and I have faith in the American male, I really do. I just, I think the people that start bringing that up, I just don't connect with it because our generation of men and the younger generation of men and the men that we have around our lives are great men. So I, outside of our bubble is what bugs me. In my bubble and, and what I have around, I have nothing but great men that I admire and I love and they are super supportive of this. So I see all these inequality and this treatment of women outside of this, Your life. my life. And that's what I'm talking about because I don't, we don't, we're not coming from an angle of like, oh, we hate men, not at all. We have amazing men and we love men. So it's what's going on out there. And I think, again, we're not promoting girls going topless at all. If they want to do it on a beach at their own time, do it on your own time. This is more of a choice. Po- yeah, a political statement and a choice and having that right. Got it. Got it. Um, you know, speaking of all the great American men, um, this is very much a girl power film, if you will. Um, main characters are female. Um, there are some male characters. Um, I'm just wondering... Um, who who your who your audience when you're making this is um, who do you who do you hope is gonna see this film and what's the message that you hope they're gonna take away or the conversation that they're gonna have as they're leaving the theater? I think the audience is anywhere from young girls, you know, 15, 16, up until young boys as well, 15, 16, up until you know, 15, 60. You know, you have the young generation that I get emails from a lot of young girls, like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 in college and high school and middle school, writing papers on this. They get it. We're talking about the old system of 50, 60, 70 year olds. A lot of them are just can't wrap they, their they can't it. wrap their hands, their heads around this. And they're, the young generation gets it. Our generation gets it. So this is about that's what I care about. You know, if the older generation wants to see it and support, great. But they're not the future. I'm sorry. It's true. Um, I think that's a it's a pretty good place to leave it. I think as a final question, now that now that this film is completed, um, what is the next project on the horizon? Free the vagina. And for you, Casey. I'm I, kidding. I <laughs> <laughs> um, just it. We we shall see. We, we shall see. see. We don't know. We're kind of like we're continue. just we're just waiting. We're just waiting to see what happens. Day but we're living day by day. We actually well, learn what it is to live day in by the day. moment. Yeah, right. with this one, it's a big lesson. Well, uh, this movie has been incredibly difficult to get. Yeah, to, I'm sure to the audiences. So we're just like <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. Four well, years in the making. <laughs> it's coming out this Friday the twelfth. Yes. The film is Free the Nipple. Casey LeBeau, Lena Esco. Thank you guys so much for coming on WKCR. (laughs) Thank you.